Welcome to Sleepover Cinema, where we analyze the films that created the collective unconscious of those who begged their mom for lacy camis from Limited 2 because Vanessa <laughs> Ann Hudgens was known to rock a lacy cami. I'm Hannah Leach. <laughs> that was me. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> and I'm Audrey Leach. We are the sister filmmaking duo also known as Two Pink Productions, and we haven't stopped thinking about these movies since we first saw them. We're going to explore the good, the bad, and the nonsensical of the movies that first inspired our love for film in an attempt to answer the question, are these movies actually good? And at the end of the day, do we really care if they are? Today we are talking about 2006's High School Musical. For the East High Wildcats. We are days away from our biggest game of the year. Basketball is everything. Wildcats! You, you are so dedicated. But when their star player steps off the court. Any last minute sign up? I'd like to audition Miss Darvis. And onto center stage. I'll sing with her. We're soaring, flying. He'll show the entire school there's something to sing about. Is this some kind of joke? You're the team leader, not a singer. Did you ever think maybe I could be both? We're breaking We're free. Soaring, flying. Our team is coming apart because of your singing thing. High School Musical, a Disney Channel original movie. With the sweet life of Zach and Cody's Ashley Tisdale, Zach Efron, Vanessa Ann Hutchins, and Lucas Gravio. High School Musical. Finally! Finally, we have arrived at 2006's High School Musical, and for a very, very, very exciting reason. Um, you know how we keep being like, we have really exciting guests coming up, guys. <laughs> Just get ready. Well, it's finally happening today. We have Andrew and Joe of the Good Children Podcast with us. Um, not yet. They're going to be with us. Um, but if you saw the Panera Girl TikTok, those are the two that are about to join us. We're really excited. It's going to be a great conversation. So from the outset, <laughs> when I stumbled upon the Good Children podcast TikTok account for the first time, I was just immediately struck with a feeling of warmth and home. <laughs> I would definitely say that there is a Panera Girl to Cheesecake Factory Girl pipeline. It's the bread. It's the bread. It's the bread because they know good bread. An LGBT ally loves a carb. Andrew and Joe could have been in our high school friend group. Yes. Like, that's the feeling that I get. Yes. I have been listening to their episodes, like, uh, re-listening to a bunch of them today. They're probably one of the only podcasts that I would... They're, I think they're the only podcast I've ever re-listened to that is, like, a chat show. Just because it's, like, every single thing they say just feels so deeply relevant to both of us we're really 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 excited to talk with them very soon and we're saving our hot take of the week for when th we have them with us um because it's a good one and we know that they'll have opinions we're saving most things <laughs> yeah we're saving a lot of the things for once they join us so it's gonna be a short first half today let's get into high school musical so high school musical premiered on disney channel on january 20th 2006 I would have been in fifth grade. Audrey would have been in third grade. So normally I say it's not rated because it was on TV, but I decided to go to Common Sense Media and see how they rate it for kids. Um, and they say it's appropriate for ages eight and up. High School Musical is directed and choreographed by Kenny Ortega, um, who's really a man of great renown. He's done a lot of things that are relevant to us. Here's just a list, a quick list. There's a lot of things. Um, all the High School Musicals, obviously, Michael Jackson, since this is it and then more relevant or like recently julian the phantoms descendants the rocky horror nbc live version gilmore girls cheetah girls 2 actually i think it was fox not nbc but it doesn't matter um it was fox yeah uh gilmore girls cheetah girls 2 <laughs> the opening of the 2002 olympics <laughs> um newsies hocus pocus and the Pointer Sisters video for I'm So Excited, which I thought was funny. Um, he also choreographed the Janet Jackson, Justin Timberlake halftime show. Really went down in history as a pop culture moment. Um, he's worked with Cher. He choreographed Ferris Bueller, Pretty in Pink, Dirty Dancing, Tu Wong Fu, and the Best of Both Worlds tour unbeatable unbeatable no stone has been unturned the screenplay was written by peter 
Barsaccini, and he has written all the episodes of High School Musical, the musical, the series. He also wrote Sharpay's Fabulous Adventure, any spinoff related to High School Musical, and also High School Musical China, which I didn't know was a thing, but I guess it <laughs> is. Um, and the movie was produced by Salty Pictures and First Street Films for Disney Channel. As though we were unclear as to what the synopsis <laughs> of High School Musical is, we've got our typical three. Um, the first one is from IMDb. A popular high school athlete and an academically gifted girl get roles in the school musical and develop a friendship that threatens East High's social order. (laughs) They don't even get the roles. They don't even get the roles. We don't get to know. Well, the assumption by Sharpay's last line is, yeah. Oh, you're right. You're right. You're right. But that's the last thing we find out. That's not the thing that starts it. The Rotten Tomatoes synopsis, Troy Bolton, the star athlete at a small town high school, falls for nerdy beauty, (laughs) Gabriela Montez, at a holiday karaoke party. When they return to campus, Troy and Gabriela audition for the upcoming school musical. Meanwhile, the jealous Sharpay Evans conspires to squelch their chances. The two must struggle to make it to auditions while also meeting their existing obligations to the basketball team and the academic decathlon that one's pretty good that one is comprehensive finally the letterbox synopsis troy the popular captain of the basketball team and gabriello the brainy and beautiful member of the academic club break all the rules of east high society when they secretly audition for the leads in the school's musical as they reach for the stars and follow their dreams everyone learns about acceptance teamwork and being yourself the tagline this school rocks like no other it should be breaking, it should be like, like break we're free. breaking free, yeah. we're in, yeah, something we're like that. We're soaring, flying. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so for this cast, this all feels very like redundant, but I'm just going to go for it. So, of course, we have Zac Efron as Troy Bolton, best known for Seventeen Again, all the High School Musical movies, playing Link Larkin in Hairspray. He was also in The Greatest Showman, a movie I have refused to watch and never will watch. Um, He's in Dirty Grandpa, Charlie St. Cloud, Summerland. And this new show he has coming out called Killing Zac Efron that's like a survivalist reality show featuring himself. Okay, next we have Vanessa Hudgens, aka Vanessa Ann Hudgens, as Gabriella Montez. Of course, Gabriella is her most well-known role, but she's also in Spring Breakers, Beastly, The Princess Switch, and the sequels to The Princess Switch, The Tick Tick Boom movie adaptation, Rent Live as Maureen, also Rizzo in Grease Live, and Powerless. Um, Slade. Slade. Yes, yes. Really, it slayed weirdly. Very good. And it was the day after her dad died. I know. It was a lot. Very much like YouTube viral clip scenario. Good. Next, we have Ashley Tisdale as Sharpay Evans, best known for High School Musical, Phineas and Ferb, Carol's Second Act, Skylanders Academy, um, and Sweet Life of Zack and Cody, obviously. Um, her Wikipedia says she's a sex symbol, which I thought was really funny. We have Lucas Grabeel as Ryan Evans, best known for High School Musical, Switched at Birth, Family Guy. He's been in a lot of animated shows. Um, He was also in Milk, the Harvey Milk biopic from a long time ago. Um, He was in Halloween Town High and Return to Halloween Town. But the Milk thing is especially relevant because in 2020, Kenny Ortega confirmed that Ryan was like canonically gay and in the closet. And Lucas's response to that was like, as a straight white man, I wouldn't have taken that role now because someone else could have done it better. So we're living in a world where Lucas Grabeel is straight, which I never thought would be reality, but here we are. What's bizarre about that is that that gives the impression that he thought he was playing a straight character. I think it's okay to like not think about their sexuality if you're playing a teenager. Yeah. I think that's okay. But let's be real here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Next up, we have Corbin Blue as Chad Danforth, the love of Audrey's childhood life. And this is where we watch TV, look at Corbin, and admire him. 
he was in Holiday Inn on Broadway. That's where we saw him and Audrey got the picture with him. Um, he is known from High School Musical, Flight 29 Down, Catch That Kid, Jump In, and One Life to Live. And then last but not least, uh, we have Monique Coleman as Taylor, best known for High School Musical. And she was also on The Sweet Life of Zach and Cody. Um, and she's also the host of this talk show called Gimme Mo. Like her name is Monique. And she's like been a producer and done some other things since her time on High School Musical. Um, and also cutely, Corbin and Monique co-starred in A Christmas Dance Reunion for a Lifetime uh, this past Christmas, I think. And it's just like very wholesome. Okay, so what about these numbers, Audrey? On Wikipedia, it says it cost $4.2 million to make High School Musical, which is high for a decom budget, as I recall. Upon its premiere, High School Musical attracted 7.7 .7 million viewers. The DVD went on sale on May 23rd, 2006, under the title High School Musical Encore <laughs> Edition. It created a Who sales record when 1.2 million copies were sold in its first six days, making it the fastest selling television film of all time. Yep. I remember that. Me too. And it made 131734568 in home video sales. Yup. And we had a copy. We did. We definitely did. We were a part of the 131 million. Okay, so critical and audience opinions. This movie had a critic score of 65% on Rotten Tomatoes and an average star rating of 3.1 stars on Letterboxd. Um, the critical consensus is High School Musical is brazenly saccharine, but it makes up for it with its memorable show tunes, eye-popping choreography, and appealing cast. Here are a few little critical blurbs. One person said, sure, it has its flaws, but the film skillfully crafts an exuberant, uplifting climax that results in a warm, smile-inducing feeling that remains after the credits have rolled. And sometimes that's all a film needs to do. Next critic said, a schmaltzy little piece of obvious flaws that's directed in truly horrendous fashion and populated by cardboard characters who spit out simplistic platitudes and breathy pop tunes. And then the last one. High School Musical is kitsch, sexless, and hopelessly cliched, but it manages to offer a giddy sense of fun to a generation that's overdosing on seriousness. First of all, sexless. There's no sex in it. Why would you? Oh, they're saying. At first, I thought they were saying that like that was a bad thing. <laughs> like, oh they're no! They're like no. it's sexless. Well, they are saying that it's a bad thing. Shouldn't it be sexless if it's for yes, kids? Yes, but for some reason they want it to be sexy. Question. That's weird. Audience score seventy four percent. So mm -hmm. okay, you know, a solid like ten percent higher than critics. That mm -hmm. that adds up to me. So basically, when I was cultivating audience opinions, everyone is like, "This is cheesy and unrealistic," and like blah blah blah. And I'm like, "It's a TV movie musical. Like, what is your point? Like, of yeah. course it's gonna be that way." Um, but anyway, please carry on. Yeah, anyway. So first opinion from Letterboxd, five stars. <laughs> Watched a second time because the first time I didn't see the whole thing. Yes, and slay moment for sure. I don't know why I didn't watch it as a kid. It is so perfectly campy and somehow manages to convey the greatest truth through the most unbelievable and unrealistic means <laughs> I have ever seen. Oscar Wilde said that lying is an art and this movie is what he meant. <laughs> and then three star review view from letterbox good songs but i'm with troy's dad on this one also ryan is such a ridiculous character because they just needed to make him gay or stop what do they mean by i'm with troy's dad like focus up and stop singing <laughs> like i guess i'm with troy's dad because i'm homophobic That's i'm with answer. troy's dad because i want them all to shut up <laughs> and then 2.5 stars this is my dad's favorite movie <laughs> taste so we're super excited to talk with joe and andrew from good children um the anticipation is extremely high yes um it feels like we're about to meet um like lost siblings or yes yes <laughs> you can watch this film on disney plus this yes. film this yes. piece of cinema history on disney plus and meet us right back here Okay, everyone, we 
are back and after all of the uh, leading into all of the excitement, all of the hype, we finally have Andrew and Joe of the Good Children podcast with us here today. Hello, hello. Hello. (laughs) It's such a pleasure to be here. I'm freaking out. (laughs) <laughs> no, oh my God. we're freaking out. I don't know <laughs> if you understand. When we first started listening to your podcast, it was like every other sentence, Audrey and I were like just texting each other because so much of what you talk about is also our lives. So thank you for what you do. No, thank you yeah. so much. Like I said to you guys before that the tape started rolling, like genuinely, like there's nothing I think that we feel more aligned with than like movies from the early 2000s. Um, I will say, I don't know which one of you only just started watching Glee. We, neither of you watched Glee when you were younger, right? <gasps> Audrey, you go first and then I'll explain. Yeah, so basically what had happened with Glee was mm-hmm. Spill. that we grew up in Ohio and were in show choir yeah, you in, were in Ohio. Glee. And so because of that, when Glee became really popular, we were like, it was like a little too real. It was like right, a little okay. too close close to life um so i remember watching it at the very beginning and then trailing off like i didn't watch two through six when they actually aired and then maybe like two years ago i watched all of it from beginning to end like that was a covid a covid Mm -hmm. task for me and then hannah never watched it at all and just started watching like a a week ago two weeks ago it's like two weeks ago And it was because I was, you know, I'm always looking for some sort of, like, mindless show to, like, have on when I'm living my life. And I was rewatching Secret Life for the American Teenager. Classic. But then Audrey was like, you need to stop what you're doing. You need to watch Glee instead. Get serious and watch Glee. Buckle up. I honestly need to rewatch. I actually, I screamed at Andrew last week about this. It's one of my biggest regrets is like, I also watched it like early on and then I trailed off and then I just left it there. And now every word out of Joe's mouth, I think is a Glee reference. So it kind of sucks for me. So I might join you, Hannah, and I will just have to text about it because Yeah. yeah. Okay, so right before we got on, Audrey was like, I have topics I need to bring up immediately. I think you said this in one of your episodes that you also, Joe, have paid for a cameo from none other than Miss Nikki Blonsky. Yeah, I paid for many. (laughs) Me too. Me too. I have been there. (laughs) To write a passage. She actually, to me, is like what I have. I believe I have like done an artist grant for Nikki Blonsky at this point. Like I think she could live off of the cameos I have bought for her over the years. <laughs> I have stopped because I, I do think her consistency and her quality has decreased over the years, and her price has gone up. But that's inflation. But it's really <laughs> unfortunate. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have such a like <laughs> sordid history with Nikki Blonsky. Wait, because... please elaborate. In 2017, I was in film school uh, at NYU, and I decided, I think it was my final documentary project for a class, was going to be a documentary about Nikki Blonsky. Like, but I was going to go, I was going to go be with her. I would want to see that immediately. Right? That's, I've been saying this for years, like, the documentary that needs to exist is Nikki Blonsky. Anyway, so reached out to her agent he actually responded um i had like a meeting (laughs) that was supposed to happen and then she kind of like flaked at the last minute and i was like okay cool and then it wasn't until like basically when covid began (laughs) that i had the idea to get a cameo from her and you know how you can put like a message Stop, this in is insane. the yeah. thing i was like i'm the girl that wanted to do a documentary with you like do you want to do one or whatever audrey hi it's nikki blonsky how are you and she responded and was like yes but when covid is over and yes i love that you're finishing your first documentary so yes dm me <laughs> And now she lives in Utah. She lives in Utah. Does she really? She moved to Utah, you guys. She moved to Utah. Good the thing about that I almost said the thing about Nicki Minaj. The thing about Nikki Blonsky <laughs> is that she consistently like fumbles her chance and it makes me sick. Mm-hmm. Like I am constantly rooting for her comeback. I'm rooting for like a career vehicle moment. And she me I'm not too. surprised she flaked. I'm not mm-hmm. surprised. I mean, but those cameos hit. Joe, didn't you get a cameo for her like breaking up with your friends? 
Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I did. And that's a that's a really good that's one. That's a really good one. Joe was like, he wanted Nikki to say, like, we just can't be friends anymore. And Joe was just <laughs> sending her. I will never forget receiving that text. I was like, what the hell? She was like, you guys are just on different life paths, and really sorry to say it, but I'm just the messenger. This is from Joe, not me. And I was like, that's that's all I wanted. That's it. But like this is cr- we're we're gonna go down a Blonsky hole. But we made a web series this winter where we were like the dream cameo is actually like getting Nikki not in on cameo but really in it. And the way that we were gonna pitch to her was doing a cameo live call. So like you can book like the FaceTimes on cameo. So yeah. Andrew and one of our other friends was like they were rehearsing like a speech to make to her on cameo yeah. live, and like <laughs> we were all like throwing up sick yeah. to our stomachs like the anxiety was a 10 out of 10 like yep. it was like we were about to meet the most famous person in the entire world <laughs> she was on instagram live before and she was like not doing not well. doing well like um like influence wise like she seemed to be like a little bit under the influence yeah. so we were like let's just not do it but then you were gonna make us. You were gonna hype her up. I was gonna hype because I felt like in that moment, what she wanted was to be hyped up. I was gonna be like, "You are so talented. You are beautiful. You are stunning. You got this." Because she just needed to hear it. Yeah, but I had this like him. five minute sales pitch for her that I was like, <laughs> "This is gonna. I mean, yeah, she's gonna wherever she's." At right now, she's gonna fly to New York, and she's gonna be in this web series, um, and it, it just never happen. worked out. So. Maybe one day. Okay, That's well, Nikki. we got to make something happen with Nikki Blonsky. I agree. Yes. yes. It's time. Bring her on the pod. Bring her I on honestly, the Honestly, the second week that we started Good Children, I emailed her manager. And I was like, we want her on the podcast. And obviously, we heard nothing. But that was like my yep. f- our immediate first thought. We were like, we were like, we're not going to do guests. And within 15 seconds, we were like, Nikki Blonsky. What if we contacted <laughs> Nikki Blonsky? If we can't get her independently and you can't get her independently between the four of us, there's no choice. Like, we will get her. I completely agree. Yeah. Before we get into, like, the depths of High School Musical, were you theater kids? And give us some in- some intel <laughs> on that, if yes. Oh, oh, my God. It's crazy you say that because as we were setting up, I, like, turned to Andrew and I was like, it's crazy that we were theater gays. Our whole lives. Without but really never doing... never pursued theater. I guess I kind of did. did do theater. I did, like, um, community <laughs> church theater. Um, but I oh. only had, like, one line. And before I would say the line, I was like, again, crippling with anxiety so um besides that we didn't really we were just like in your basement pretending to be on the stage yeah i think if we did theater we would have um healthier lives now like i think that like there would be a lot that was unpacked at that point mm-hmm. that we chose to keep mm-hmm. repressed until like right now yeah we do a stunning rendition of defying gravity always have yeah, always historically have. but Never, never on stage yet. Yet. <laughs> that's, that's a good, that's you need to add it yet. Because, yeah. yeah. I have an idea to do a um, DIY unauthorized community, Williamsburg community production of Spring Awakening. So if oh anybody Oh my God. Is- uh, no, yeah, we're yeah. both in. Yeah, I'm in it. <laughs> no matter the time commitment, no matter like if I will put money into it like i will do whatever it yeah. takes <laughs> i want it <laughs> so producing. bad like me, me and my best friend who i live with like it's like our favorite show and we just we just want to do it so bad but we don't want real people pursuing theater to be in it. yes that's they're the not thing. allowed to be in it but we can be in it yes. yeah because <laughs> we're not pursuing it it'll find us the theater will find us Yes. Exactly. Did you guys do theater? Well, you did show choir. Yeah. Which means, oh, yeah, you yeah. did theater. <laughs> yeah. We did both. But what we shows? weren't, like, the stars. Like, it wasn't, like, we were, like, the leading ladies. It was, like, we were, like... We were like putting in work to get like our small roles. You know what I'm saying? Audrey was like the dance captain girl, though. Oh like, my god! She had that okay. vibe. I did. A, I assistant directed the musicals for a time, so I know like theater politics. But that's where it ends mm-hmm. for me. But I do know that mm-hmm. a dance captain is a very impressive role to have. Mm-hmm. So I feel honored to be in your presence. <laughs> well, not only was she a dance captain, like she was like a dance captain one show, and then the stage manager the next. Not you hyping oh me up. Oh my god. Like, God. I mean, no, I'm not her wrong, up. though. I'm not wrong. No, this I'm, is my yeah. job. Yeah. That's huge. What shows? What shows? Okay, wait. I bet I could list it. <gasps> I bet I could. Okay. 
Okay. From your through your high school um, time to mine. Okay. 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 Um, We're two years Aida, apart, okay. if that matters. Aida. Yeah. All white Whoa. production of Aida. Right. Yeah. Okay. All white. Got it. <laughs> um, West Side Story. Okay. All white. <laughs> yeah. It's not tracking well. It's not tracking well. No, okay. no it's no. not. Um, Lay Miz. Oh my after god. That. Um, Thoroughly Modern Millie, which also has racist characters right. in it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Footloose. Uh, okay. And then, oh, the worst of all, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. Oh, wow. <laughs> you should talk about what happened. What happened? What part of it? I mean, the whole thing was just <laughs> talking about what happened show. in the finale that was not supposed Opening to night. Happen. I was stage managing that one because I did not want to be caught dead in a production of Chitty Chitty Bang Right, yeah. Good for you and, for, like, having um, that, that you knew. And it was sad because it was senior year and, like, that should have been really good, right. but it wasn't. Um, and the technical director built this, like, hydraulic car off of the base of an electric wheelchair. Oh, I'm sick already. <laughs> Basically. He was working on it until the very last second, like... I never got a real chance to learn how to charge the car, how to use the car. Like, as a stage manager, you should know that right. information. And he was very, like, protective over the vehicle. And then what ended up happening, at the end of opening night, the car died <gasps> it, at the finale. <laughs> and so oh. the whole thing is that the car flies flies off. Basically, it... It rolls off stage left, and then there's this like miniature, um, this like a miniature car that like flies across oh my on God. It, in the flies. We have so budget. it looks like this it is Broadway. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> and it, the car died, and th- there was nothing we could do. <laughs> so basically, the like assistant stage managers on the sides, I was like, just tell them to push it off. Just push it off. <laughs> So they did, but the wings were out, and then like the wings snapped. It was just like no. beyond tragic. Oh no! Honestly, is it on film? I yeah, is it, it documented? There is a video of it. Release the I tapes. Release need the it, tapes. But I, we need it. We need it. Oh my god! Yeah. I don't know why that retelling just made me like actually that cry. Is. You're sobbing. <laughs> oh my god! I wish I had been there for that so bad. A short version of my uh, theatrical career is that. I was typecast as men, like exclusively, <laughs> um, for a long ass time. Like I was a, I was an ensemble guy in Guys and Dolls, which was like whatever. And then um, I, right. And then um, as okay, relevant to both of you because I listened to your show, had like a really intense Weight Watchers uh, stunt yeah. my senior year of high school. Got skinny and immediately got like a real role. Oh my god! Like, yeah, it was real. No, like that's up. the craziest that's... thing about a high school musical <laughs> yeah. is the way that it like they really play into people's insecurities, and you're like, oh, you're playing the mother, great. Like you're playing uh-huh. the old Beyond, lady. Yeah. yeah. I forgot to mention that that three shows in a row, I was I was granny, I was granny, <laughs> granny? old woman. And then like grandma, and like then boom, boom, boom. <laughs> no. That was like that was like my villain origin story to like launch me into Weight Watchers like depths. Oh, no, <laughs> oh my god. I know it was dark, but also really funny. Like it was character building. And as I was watching High School Musical, I was like, I would have been cast as Miss Darbus, and that would have been a good thing. A really good. Oh role. my god, Miss Darbus, yeah. one of the two villains of the film. I do feel like I like look at someone, and I can tell that they either would or have played Miss Darbus in a production of High School Musical. <laughs> like it's really, it, there's a tell, and it's like it's a je ne sais quoi about someone where I'm like, yeah, that's what happened yeah. here. So let's get into this movie. So it's January 2006. This movie drops. <laughs> Paint a picture. What are you two up to? Do you watch it together? Like, what happens in your lives? We're honestly absolutely watching it together. I will say. <laughs> Were we not? Oh, my God. Are you mad at me? I know. I just. I know I watched it a week early because of Disney Channel On Demand. And Disney Channel On Demand used to put things on a week early. Did I know that? I, I'm sure you did not know that. Um, <laughs> and... It was like I was sitting in my parents' room and I was like, this is, I knew, I knew going into this movie it would change my life. Like I knew that 
at 10 years old. And I, re- I could, like vividly could see the home screen. And I remember pressing play and like the moment it began, it was game over. We were 10. <laughs> we were 10. We, def- we definitely then began to collaborate on like, we memorized the dances obviously yeah. immediately. We did Troy like, and Gabriella. Show. Yeah. Yeah. I was Gabriella. For sure. For sure. For sure. Yeah. For sure. Um, <laughs> and yeah, we would, every single movie, anything, we would always be in Joe's basement. Like it was like the comfiest couch, mm. but we would do everything down there. So like that's absolutely where we watch it. Yeah, it was multiple times. Viewing. For sure. Yeah, I can't believe how many times. Like, watching it, I was like, I've seen this movie 10,000 times. Yeah. <laughs> like, every yeah. beat of it is so fresh in mm-hmm. my head. But it hits different every it single does. time. <laughs> it does. It really does. Where, Where were you? We, we saw it. Well, Audrey, I remember very clearly what we were doing when we watched it the first time. Do you remember? <laughs> no. Okay, okay, yeah. So we were also in a basement at our house. <laughs> and um, I remember we had... So I was in fifth grade. Audrey was in third grade. But I was already, like, verging towards, like, my edgy, like, alt-girl okay. moment. Mm, right. Like, I wasn't there yet. Avril Lavigne pipeline. Yes, okay. big Avril Lavigne girl. Yes. Um, that was me. And it's still me. But it was especially me then. Um, and I remember we were down there, and we had this, like, weird plastic rocking horse okay. that we had in the basement <laughs> yeah. forever. And obviously I was too big for it, but I remember, like, propping it up so it was vertical. And I was, like, sitting on the back yeah. of this weird rocking chair and I remember watching start of something new and being like this is stupid (gasps) this is not for me and was my tune changed eventually yes but that is what I remember the most was that moment it's just funny that we were in theater and we were involved in that stuff but you were like fuck high school (laughs) musical fuck high school musical the judgment is real I actually was thinking about this on the way here and I didn't like Hannah Montana or Wizards of Waverly Place because they were so mean. Like the main girls were so like rude all the time. Wait. You know what I'm talking about? You're kind of right. Yeah. They'd always be like so rude to their parents and their friends and everyone just loved them anyway. And I'm like, these are bitches. I felt that about (laughs) Zoe 101. Mm. Zoe is a villain from episode one. She's a know it all. She's a boss. She's bossy. I'm sorry mm-hmm. to say, but she is. Yeah. That and was, with what we know now. I, I'm willing like to say that... anything about her now. Yeah. <laughs> Drag. <laughs> I'll keep going. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But that is, maybe you felt, um, maybe you felt that way because you related to Sharpay and she's villainized for no reason mm-hmm. throughout mm-hmm. the entire movie. Mm-hmm. That's a reason to hate it. Audrey, what was your first, do you, like, what was your first impression? Do you remember? It's weird. All I really remember, because third grade, that's like a little young for yeah. like really remembering right. things. But um, I remember how popular it was at school. I loved Gabriella's <laughs> outfits. Mm. And I wanted to be, like, I wanted to embody <laughs> her so badly. Like, I've I, even today, like, this is my, like, Gabriella Montez cosplay. Like, Loki. You are giving Gabriella. Um, you really are. The- <laughs> Stunning. Thank you. My my third grade self is so happy with that. Like my hair is not this texture at all. I loved her um the outfit she wore in her solo song, the like mm-hmm. light blue long sleeved shirt with the jeans with the like appliques and stuff. I wanted yes. that. Yeah. I was trying to see if like the the outfits were really outdated and like yeah, they were a time in history, but like we would still wear those outfits today on the streets. Oh, Troy's outfits even were more so. I really, I want to dress just like them now. But like my immediate <laughs> first note was like, I need every piece of Troy's first outfit. Like the fashion mm. in that movie is good. The mm. things they put Sharpay in are insane. The corset, yep. the pink corset. It's again. nuts. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. Gabriella, yeah. I mean, Vanessa Hudgens, the blueprint. <sighs> Continually yeah. the blueprint. The blueprint. Yes. I have obsessed with Vanessa Hudgens. Like, I, I don't know what it is. Like, for my whole life like from i guess it was this movie it <laughs> yeah, started sorry, my yeah. love like it kind of like yeah i'm obsessed with her and then princess switch don't get me started like that's one of the best <laughs> movies i've ever seen so i mean she does it all she so does. she really does i'm just waiting for her to respond to my dm that i sent her about <laughs> seven months ago so we'll see if that uh that happens okay so normally in the first half of every episode audrey and i do a um like a hot take of the week and i came up with one just for you too which is i feel like we may have already kind of established the answer but like 
are you, if you have to pick one in your soul, are you a Sharpay girl or are you a Gabriella girl? It's Sharpay. Sharpay. <laughs> okay, tell me, tell me more. Tell me more. The thing I noticed upon watching it last night was the fact that Sharpay is friendless and like a loser. Yeah, she's and weird. Once like, I was like, oh, she's coded as popular, but like, there's she only hangs out with her brother, and like, she's obsessed with musical theater. Mm-hmm. I was like, she really is just like a weird. Gr- she's Rachel Berry. Like, she gave me yeah. exactly Rachel Berry vibes. I always thought she was so cool. Mm-hmm. And the moment that I was like, she's a freak who's really talented, I was like, this is like this is why. Yeah. The mm-hmm. moment she walked on screen, I loved her. Her facial expression, everything about Ashley her. Tisdale. Like, I, Ashley Tisdale. I mean, Ashley Tisdale is a phenomenal <laughs> actress. Like, I was studying her face the entire time because she's so emotive <laughs> and expressive. And I was like, I want to be that. I do think, though, in high school, I was giving Gabriella. Andrew very I much was think like I Gabriella. was giving Gabriella like down to like the freaky study girl. What'd she call herself? She said, I don't want to be known. I don't want them to freaky call me the freaky girl. genius girl. The yeah. freaky genius girl. Like, I think that like I was probably saying the same thing and no one was saying that about me. You know <laughs> what I mean? I was like, I don't want to be the freaky genius girl. It was like, uh-huh. yeah, you're not. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wrote that part. Like, I took note of that part because she's, like, stunning head to toe with her yeah. awesome <laughs> mother. And she's like, I don't want to be known as the freaky genius girl again. And I'm like, that's not what's going to no, happen. You weren't. No one's going to say that. <laughs> you did no her voice perfectly. We were just talking about okay. the voice that she does in that movie is nuts. It's She's speaking in a whistle tone the entire <laughs> time. I'm like, why? I didn't know that someone's voice could be that high. It was... Oh, yeah. 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 Audrey and I have been reciting her lines like back and forth to each other like forever probably I love it. wait hannah yeah what's but your hannah, are you oh shit. are you a sharpay girl well i kind of have like an avoidant answer sort of because <laughs> am, between the two of them yes i am deeply 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 a sharpay girl i relate to her on many levels the pink the delusional air, um, having Ryan built into her every move. I can relate to that. But I really, in my soul, am a Kelsey girl. Yeah. Oh my and God. that is a plot yeah. twist. <laughs> that, that is a twist. That makes sense. I do okay. feel like I was only exclusively friends with Kelsey's in high school. Like, that and this was is my what I'm group. saying. Yeah, we really would have gotten along, for sure. Yes. Yeah, like her with her little hat. Like, you want to hear how the song really should sound? Like, <laughs> like, I can feel that. I can feel that within. And I remember when I was watching it as a kid, like, I specifically was like, that's me. Like, that's yeah. my girl. Um, and that was just yeah. my truth. That's but, beautiful. Audrey, you were a Gabriella girl, correct? Well, not. I feel like not in actuality. I mean, I didn't actually do any of the things. Like, I wasn't known for being the smartest, and I wasn't like randomly dating the most popular d- guy or something. So, um, I think aesthetically, I wanted to be a Gabriella girl, mm. but truthfully, I'm probably more in the Kelsey uh, Taylor. Oh, Taylor. Kelsey Taylor, Taylor. Land. Oh, who's Taylor? Taylor is the uh, Gabriella's Monique friend. Coleman. Oh, my. Monique. Her name is Taylor? Isn't that shocking? Yeah. That's shocking. It's shocking. I would have just I called know. her Monique Coleman. Like, I think I'm just yeah. You should have just went as Monique. Head. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. But That's, she's an interesting character who does not get enough screen time in that movie. No, she's kind of paid dust. Um, yeah, and but she's kind also- of also a villain. They're all yeah. villains. Yeah. They all... yeah, they're doing her, her and Chad are doing evil shit. Actually, yeah. like Actually, cyberbullying. That was like, so messed up. What they're doing. Yes. Yeah. And for what? I was forced to be Kelsey once in a talent show. There's a picture of me crouching in the corner with like a tiny baby piano thing. And <laughs> crouching. Did you have on a fun hat and a scarf? Yeah. I do have on a fun hat. Of yeah. Course. yeah. Of course. <laughs> Wow. That the is... way they dressed, insane. Imagine you went to school with anyone who dressed anything like any of them. Mm-hmm. Any one of those characters. Again, like Sharpay's outfits, like, come on. If I saw her, I'd be like, what are you doing, sis? But, like, kind of, you're slaying. I mean, anything that was happening in that movie wasn't, I mean, can you imagine your high school experience being anything like that? Because I can't. No. 
I don't they know. have so much school spirit. It's insane. That's I was <laughs> saying. Get it's like the, fuck the here. whole town. Like they're gonna investigate the drinking water in East High and be like, oh, they were all hallucinating because yeah. Yeah. they just like look out the window and there's a pep rally happening every 15 minutes. <laughs> yeah, like and it's choreographed. You have class. And it's like outside of the musical performances. It's not like it's in like we're not suspending our disbelief. Like no. out of nowhere, there is just pep rallies. <laughs> Every yep. 15 yeah. minutes. No, that up. makes me sick. Those cheerleaders are working around the clock. The Cheerios. <laughs> the Cheerios. They really were. It was glee. Something we talk about a lot on this show is diegetic dancing and non-diegetic <laughs> dancing. <laughs> and like, singing. And singing. Yeah. And High School Musical weaves them so mm-hmm. much. They do. That it's kind of, it's kind of crazy. Like mm. it, it, it messes with your head a little yeah. bit. <laughs> It is like there is no rule book when it comes to what they're doing in that movie. <laughs> nope. Like, because it starts with the karaoke and then we're our, it goes right into random performance. It's like stick to uh-huh. the status quo out of nowhere. You're like, that everyone's is... involved. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Martha, where do you come from, girl? But obsessed with you. Um... I think what kind of needs to be addressed at the front is how much. ADR, voice replacement, weird ass audio goes on in this movie. And it's more it's than insane. just Drew Seeley singing for Zach. When you listen to it with like a trained ear when you're older, mm-hmm. you're like, wait, literally almost no sound in this movie actually happened. No, <laughs> like, no it's Gabrielle is not singing. You're like, <laughs> no, what? <laughs> what goes on with her voice when it like, what song is, we, were, we just listened to the entire soundtrack as we were setting up. When there was me and you. When yes, there was me right? and you. It's funny. How? Oh. Like, it's actually crazy. <laughs> Write it in her register. I'm yeah. just confused. What was that about? Yeah. Like, did someone make a huge mistake in production? Like, why doesn't why can yeah. no one sing the songs? Like, did they lose the files and she like could not come back? <laughs> because it doesn't make sense. She can hit those notes. Right. Yes. Like it's not yeah. that it's low. Vanessa Hudgens. It's not Yeah, she, she, yeah. she could do sing anything. sneaker oh night. She could do anything. Mm-hmm. I saw that woman on Broadway. Mm-hmm. What was she in? <laughs> Gigi. I saw that too. Did we see it together? Yeah, I guess we yeah. did. Yeah. Yeah. I, would yeah, kill. Yeah. I would love to uh-huh. see her perform live. It was she was Greece. really good. She, she slayed. Also saw Corbin Blue on Broadway in Holiday Inn, which is like not the best show ever. But the point is, I had a huge childhood crush on him and then actually met him at the stage door. What what year was that? 20, I think it was six, like 2016, 2017. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, I like couldn't even speak. <laughs> I was so I took impact. the pick. He does. He, yeah. That was my big takeaway from the whole movie. I was like, I forgot how much I was in love with Corbin Blue. Yeah. It was like, he's on the street. so hot. I was like, yo, stop. But yeah, you're so right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, like, rem- do you remember the moment where you saw Corbin Blue's armpit hair? Yes, I wrote school? that down. Woo. I actually can't believe you guys just said that, that for 24 Joe's hours. I've been talking pits the entire time. Your husband's been shaming me for a full day about this. I'm like, Joe, you literally are just talking about their pits? I, could, like, I was like, that changed my life. That's when I was gay. The moment I saw his armpit hair. Yeah. That changed mm-hmm. everything. Yeah. That was, to me, it was like, it was like observing like a while. Like, it was like a new uh-huh. species. Yes. You know what I mean? I was, I was like, like, that exists? You're like, there's hair under there? Uh, what? Yeah. I was just like really confused. I'm so <laughs> like, happy that you brought it up. Like, that actually makes me so, like, it was my main takeaway. The armpit hair in that movie changed my life. It yeah. really pushed He's boundaries. A pit guy. It pushed boundaries for Disney Channel, especially. Mm-hmm. The whole the rest of the movie, like, I was like, I wonder if like <laughs> that only happened because they were in tank tops. Like that's why we've never seen it on Disney before. Like it was because of the basketball uniform. But the armpit hair, I that's probably like when people hear that, they're going to be taken right back mm-hmm. to 2006 mm-hmm. because it was life changing. I also noticed when I was watching earlier that like right before the armpit reveal, when he's like <laughs> stretching, do you notice how like dancerly his stretches are? Like. <laughs> Like, they're not basketball stretches that he's doing. He's, he's doing, like, like he's like, like, flexibility. Oh, yeah. like, <laughs> I'm like, oh, yeah, you don't like dancing and you don't like singing clearly <laughs> by your choice of stretches. <laughs> and then the armpit right after. It made me uncomfortable as a kid. 
but you know, just experience. a lot of man. Yeah, yeah we were like smirking. We were like, <laughs> yeah. Mm. <laughs> okay. Taylor's rolling backpack. Did you notice that? <laughs> no, like, she's like, she rolls it through grass. She's That's going to the I airport. Like, it's this scene, and I she's rolling the backpack across the grass, all while having the most fucked up wig with this stupid <laughs> headband covering the hairline. They did her like, so fucking they, dirty her with her hair. Is nuts. It's insane. It's not okay. And it, I know that it is true. She is Moni Coleman has talked about before how mm-hmm. they did not know how to do black women's hair, mm-hmm. and they fucked her over because of mm-hmm. that. Um, and she has, like, a, a million different headbands in High School Musical, and it's just, like, depressing. It's insane. Um, it's sad. But she does take a rolling backpack and just drag it across the grass. It's when sopping her, wet. <laughs> like, yeah, it's when when her and um, Gabriella are, like, when she's, like, my nail beds are history. My nail <laughs> beds are history. <laughs> right into the books. Yeah. Right into the books. It's really, it's truly. Classic. Making that my Instagram bio. <laughs> <laughs> no, I really do think like the problem, I, I, the problem with the Taylor character is like Monique Coleman was not a loser, and it like doesn't read that she is, but she should be playing one. Mm-hmm. Like she was yeah. too, she was n- not weird enough to be weird. But that backpack is their mm-hmm. attempts to weird her up. They were like, <laughs> this will, this will get the point across. She's like, okay, yeah. I'll drag it. Yeah. <laughs> she came to our middle school one time. We weren't what are you there. Saying? We weren't there. It, it was like the year after we graduated, and like she did a what? speech for like a, a food drive, and I was like, "Monique Coleman is there. <laughs> I'm in high school." Like, <laughs> I was um, pissed. How did everyone in the chat here feel when Vanessa Hudgens is like, when they're on the roof, I think, when she's like, and when I was singing with you, I just felt like a girl. Like that part you were talking about. <laughs> <laughs> and then he goes, you even look like one, too. Ew. <laughs> like, why is he oh nagging her? <laughs> <laughs> but, she, but like, she's like, at my last school, everyone thought I was a freak. But when I was singing with you, I felt like just a girl. <laughs> like, this has some energy From to it that to I girl. can't quite place. No. But there's something. Everyone in this movie is too hot for their role. Like, mm-hmm. is the main <laughs> issue because she's not selling it. She's not Mm-mm. selling me freaky no. genius girl. No, no one had to no. remind her she was a girl. <laughs> she knew. No. No. Those jeans, yeah. like, those imagine- applique jeans. She knew. <laughs> yeah, she hair. fucking knew she was hot. She yeah. knew she was the hottest one there. Like, please. <laughs> Even in her like long skirt that she wears for Breaking Free, yeah. like that very, very religious looking outfit that she has on. I'm like, she still looks. Really <laughs> she's serving. Good. Always. Her little lab coat outfit reminded me of something really specific. And I don't know if you guys will have played this or not. And if you haven't, we don't have to get into it. But did you ever play VMK? Y- you know I played VMK. <laughs> like, okay. that is, yeah. Thank God. There was not a virtual world that I was not a part of as a child. But Virtual Magic Kingdom was one of the most important ones to me. I probably oh watched you. You definitely is... watched me I would play. just sit there and watch Joe play That things. was half of our childhood. Oh, my play. God. The fact that you guys know about this, no one yeah. ever knows about this. It, like, is bad. There's, like, a, a beta version of it still up. Yes. I know. Yes. But do you remember when, like, it was, like, the high school musical outfits dropped on VMK, and it was, like, you, had to, you got, like, clout if you had that shit? I actually, like, you're taking me right back. Because I don't think I've ever had a conversation with another human being who actually played right. this game. But right. I remember, I vividly remember, yeah. <laughs> Oh my mm-hmm. god. That game was uh-huh. sick. Yeah. That was like that was a life changing experience for me. It was VMK. Yes. For sure. I I totally agree. Me and my cousin would like do you, okay, we're about to really get in it. Do you remember the sci fi drive in room with like Yeah, the cars? I do. Yes, I do. Okay, okay. Would you go did you ever do the thing where you stood there and you were like not taken over and over again to get like a virtual girlfriend or boyfriend? Yeah, you know I was. We're not, we probably dated on VMK. Honestly, <laughs> probably hundred percent. Uh huh. <laughs> Me and my cousin would do that all the time. And then one time, I don't even know. I think Audrey knows about this. I like got a boyfriend. And we like went to like my private room or whatever, and we got ki- <laughs> I got kicked off of VMK for like s- like child sexting on VMK. No. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> no. Like I got booted. 
I got fully booted from, from my own sexting? room. I would have been child sexting. Like I don't know if that's the right way to put it. Hysterically, I would be like the police are showing up. Like, yeah, you would have been guess. going to sleep. You would be. I sick. wouldn't have slept that night. Yeah, I would have been so sick. When <laughs> I got back from Club Penguin. I thought that again the government was coming for me. I was like, this is it. Right. Right. <laughs> and getting thing- kicked off the igloo. Yeah. 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 Kicked off the igloo. Yeah. yeah. And I don't know if Club Penguin was like this. I'm guessing it probably was, but um. On VMK, it was like you could only be on it from like 10 a.m. EST to midnight. It was like closed, like it would close Wait. at night. No, Club Penguin was after hours. They were there was Cl- no yeah. rules there. That's when shit hit. Okay, the was virtual was okay. VMK like close. was it based around the park hours? Like did it open and close I, when the park opened and closed? Yes, yeah, that I think is that's it. So yeah. incredible. I'm a deeply repressed yeah. Disney gay, and that to me like is <laughs> that's Disney magic in a major way. That was. Immersive theming, right? Yeah. Now. Yes. Yes. I just remember like waiting for it to be 10 a.m. Like me and my cousin, like sitting there, like waiting, 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 and then getting in and being like, it's our time. But holy oh, shit, yeah, I'm so glad that you played drive-in. that. Yeah. You got to get to the sci fi drive in immediately to get your next catch. Like that was my life on BMK. That's incredible. Yeah. yeah. And I could keep going, but we don't need to. There's literally so much we more to say. Now is not the time yeah. or the place. Yeah. <laughs> what other, like, good things or, like, enjoyable things did we encounter in this rewatch? Uh, this could potentially be a six-hour conversation. So, like, just <laughs> stop me when you feel it's time. But the, the most overwhelming part of this experience for me was realizing how gay this movie is. Like, how overwhelmingly (laughs) queer-coded the entire plot of High School Musical is. Mm -hmm. And it kicked Mm -hmm. in at Get Your Head in the Game. Where I was like, this is a movie about someone being... The whole plot of High School Musical is that Troy Bolton is afraid of being called gay. Yes. He's, like, whispering, I sing. You're like, <laughs> like okay, why you're are you sing. whispering that? Why are you whispering? <laughs> like, like, there are straight men who sing. There is something else going on under the surface uh-huh. with Troy Bolton. Yeah. The jump from I sang a song once to my entire <laughs> life is over and I'm going to be called gay is yeah. like. And it's, it's funny because it's actually really not under the surface at all. That is the only, that is the only reason you yeah. can come up mm-hmm. with. That's the only reason that he could be, that the school could be so up, up in arms and he's like so yes. um, afraid of being found mm-hmm. out that he's saying a song in, in like a ski lodge. Um, <laughs> we looked into the writer of it, obviously, because I was like, we were like, is the writer gay? And I actually do. We don't. I, I think it's unconfirmed that no. he has a lot of nature and scenery images on his Instagram. So we were like, <laughs> okay. We're not going to okay. make a claim. Yeah. We're not going to A lot of sunsets <laughs> were posted. Yeah. Was... He's abdicating from <laughs> confirming or denying. I actually, every time we do a movie, we like do the research on all the people. And his name is like Peter or something. And the only like real screenwriting credits he has is like ev- all the high school musicals and like all of the spinoffs in that and like the new series. And like that. He it. did the new series. He picked a lane. Uh huh. Yeah. Oh. oh, we got to watch it. Yeah, we have never watched. Yeah. No. Me neither. Have you, Audrey? I watched one episode and then I said, I am actually not a child. Yeah, that's yeah. exactly <laughs> what happened. It's weird. But now I'm like, I gotta see Olivia Rodrigo and Joshua Bassett. I think I need to see it in real life. Yeah. But yeah, the, the yeah. queerness of it was my main thing. Mm-hmm. I was like, this is actually a beautiful story. And that leads to my next point, which is, and I this is no disrespect to Vanessa Hudgens, but if they were to remake to this say. movie for a third a, a third time, Gabriella Montez should be a twink, and it would change the whole <laughs> yeah. plot of the movie, and it would be actually compelling. make the movie make sense. Yes, because it is yeah. confusing. Yeah, the whole time. Yep. Yes. That's my it's final like- statement. And, oh, and especially, okay, a, a scene that would really work with what you just said is, you know when um, Troy and Gabriella are, like, like engaging in horseplay on the court, yes. and then the dad comes <laughs> in and is nice like, play. yeah, he's like, this is a closed practice, and she's like, oh, I'm so sorry, and he's like, yeah, get the fuck out, but it's like, why would you walk in on your son with, like, a hot girl and be like, get the fuck out? It You're doesn't make any so sense. You're so aligned. Right. Yeah. That is literally where I was like, no, no this needs to be gay. Like, it's so yeah. insane. Yes. Yeah. A basketball coach, like, knowing who Coach Bolton is, <laughs> he wouldn't, I just 
don't believe that all of these, um, that him and all of Troy's teammates would care this fucking much about Troy not talking to anybody else or thinking about anything else other than basketball no. and the game or whatever. No. Like. It is absolutely homophobia at work at East High. Yep. In Albuquerque, I New Mexico. Agree. His brain would trail off to singing and then he would like, get your head in the game. Get yeah. your head in the game. And I'm like, oh my <laughs> God. Like, we've all been through it, but like, you just gotta, yeah, you just gotta say yeah. it. Oh. And it's funny too that, you know, we can have that whole conversation and it's so true, but then Ryan. Like, Ryan as a character, nobody, it's just completely not discussed or talked about or mm. called out at all. But he's gay. Yeah. I was going to say, I'm guessing, Joe and Andrew, that you both know this, but you know that, like, a couple years ago, Lucas Grabeel was like, I'm straight. Yes. Right? I do know that. I do After being in know Milk? That. Why would you choose to be Ryan in High School Musical and then be in Milk, milk and then be like, I'm straight? It comes out as straight. You're like, <laughs> uh, what? <laughs> You what? <laughs> it's so brave. It I mean, is. It's true allyship. It if really we're gonna is. like, you know, if we take it for what it is, thank you yeah. to Lucas Grabeel for that, and then for the incredible cover that he and I believe it was Ashley Tisdale did of. It was yeah. What I've been looking for. What song is it? It's acoustic. It's in the backyard. Yeah, what of I've been looking for, yeah. It'll, that, that rendition, that composition changed my life. That I've never had someone that knows me like you do, the way you do. And I've never had someone as good for me as you, no one like you. So lonely before I finally found what I've been looking for. I do have a note here that says, and this is on the Ryan note, like the first scene with Ryan, when they're all in the, the, the classroom at Mrs. Jarvis's and she is screaming at them to take theater seriously. Um, <laughs> I wrote down, movie would be better if they were able to say faggot. And I'm just going to keep it at that <laughs> because it's true. Because they, that yeah. is like, mm -hmm. we would have a lot more clarity on what's going on here if Chad, if Chad. Ch uh, Chad. Yeah. Chad. If, literal Chad. Yeah. If literal Chad was <laughs> walking around saying a slur, because it would really make a lot yeah. more sense to Ryan and to Troy. I have a question for you all. What do you think the musical Twinkle Town is about? <laughs> When they said, twi we were like, what musical are they doing? And then they said Twinkle Town. We were like, okay. <laughs> we're like, yeah, it's, it is. It's Twinkle Town. My main because question is like, is Bop to the Top in it? Right. That's what I'm yes. saying. That's my main question. If Bop to the Top is in Twinkle Town, which we are led to believe it is because it's a callback audition. Right. So the song should be from the show does that mean that there's like bilingual characters in twinkle town <laughs> honestly i learned a lot of spanish during that song that was better than my eight years <laughs> yeah that was duolingo for the kids yeah twinkle town um, to me just... seems like it's about a giant moon and a tree is the limit <laughs> to what i know that's happening in that movie and there are only yeah. two roles in the whole production mm -hmm. yeah well, it's it's hard to know because the songs reflect the plot of High School Musical, the film, more than they reflect <laughs> the plot of a show so that right. is in the movie. Um, so the only characters we know about are Minnie and Arnold. <laughs> and I just, like, want to know what... We should honestly email... We need to oh email Peter and be like... What is the show? Is it giving like gravity? Because it's do you like... think he has any concept of what the show is? Or do you think that he just like <laughs> at the last second was like, I forgot this is about a musical. I wrote down Twinkle Town. It's like yeah. We would we would email him and he would like pull a full JK Rowling I and would... like reverse engineer an answer. I like, want a Potter sure. more that is just about East High. <laughs> Me yeah. too. You get lore, sorted into just... one of the tables <laughs> and yeah. you just read lore all day. Yes. Yeah. But you saying that it probably isn't an actual show that he actually thought about is probably true because 
the timeline of High School Musical is so odd for what you would think it should be. You would think that this timeline will span the audition to the show. Right. You know? Like, the fact that the entire span of the movie leads up to the callback audition is really odd, and you never even get the payoff of that because High School Musical 2 is during the summer. Right, we have no idea how the show went. Show us the show. We don't see an actual High School Musical until High School Musical 3, and by that point, it's like um, them, it's like a... Yeah. them doing a show about themselves like it's really it's odd. very odd but i do have to applaud miss darbus for allowing <laughs> kelsey to be like a mm-hmm. student composer mm-hmm. and to like write a show herself that's really cool good and for like mrs. Darbus. She had a, yeah. yeah good for mrs darbus if anything like again she was screaming the entire movie she had some sort of <laughs> i don't know what was with the phones, her, she's she a Mennonite. Pissed. She is a Mennonite. That's what it was. She is anti-technology. <laughs> she, she's literally like she explains the dangers of cell phones. She's doomsday prepping for like she Y2K is. in 2006. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She has a lot to work through. One th- yeah. thing about her that really I didn't buy it was okay. Well, first of all, the audition montage is like beautiful to this day it's so funny. It is. It it's is like the really dancing good. guy when the opera singer comes in and slays it, and she's like. Oh, like that was really something. I'm like, she was. She did a great we job. We said the yeah. same exactly. We were like, wait, are they gonna say she's bad? Because like that was beautiful. The vibrato, the vibrato was beautiful. Yeah. It's insane. Yeah. She was looking like, for. She had her favorites, and it was Ryan and Sharpay, and she did not care mm-hmm. that that girl was classically trained. Yeah. <laughs> Although, yeah. like, I will say Ryan and Sharpay's version of what I've been looking for better, better, better. Yep. I mean, yeah. It, I mean, they yeah. were bringing everything to the table. On Every that Ryan one. and Sharpay version <laughs> is better. Yes, always. Yeah. yeah, I mean, not to mention Ashley Tisdale sounding like a computer. Uh-huh. Um. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And she does, but we love her anyway. <laughs> we, we it's do. okay. <laughs> um, but I do kind of wish they had left like a little bit of vibrato in there because she's mm-hmm. supposed to be. Somebody who loves musical theater, not yeah. somebody who wants to be a pop star. And I think that got really conflated, like, in this, it's in really her character point. arc. Like, all the way to the third movie, like, with Rachel Berry, it's like, no, that's a musical theater nerd. Right. Yes. Yeah. With Sharpay, it's like, she wants to be Britney Spears or yeah. something. You don't really get musical You're theater. You're so right. Nerd. <laughs> And, like, I hate to bring up Sharpay's Fabulous Adventure, but did anyone Please. watch it? I have seen it. <laughs> yeah. We have to watch. Our plan is, like, to watch it tonight. Yeah. Our, we have, this is not relevant to your, like, actually, it, you don't have to include this, but our next episode comes out tomorrow, and the title is Sharpay's Fabulous Adventure, but we have not watched the movie, so it's, like, important <laughs> that we get on that beforehand. But, what, mm-hmm. like, does, does she pursue Broadway in that? Yes, she goes to New York. Uh, <laughs> it's I'm pretty sure I could be wrong about this, but I'm I think Austin Butler is in it. Oh my god! I'm pretty sure Elvis. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> is Elvis it? is in it. <laughs> There's that Austin Butler, Ashley Tisdale, Vanessa Hudgens drama now. Wait, what's the drama though? What's I the think drama? I don't want to. I don't want to speak on behalf of Vanessa Hudgens, and I certainly <laughs> don't want to speak on behalf of Ashley Tisdale. But I think that there is like because Vanessa and um, what's his name, Elvis Austin. Vanessa and Austin dated for many years. They broke up during mm-hmm. the filming of Elvis. Ashley and Vanessa have been best friends forever. Now Ashley's only really associating with Austin and not associating yeah. with Vanessa. Mm-hmm. And then some TikToker, like, called it out, and then she commented and was like, you have no idea what you're talking about. He responded and said, release, he said, she said. And then, like, (laughs) she blocked him. (laughs) He said, she said. And so we don't have answers. Yeah. But he's right about he said, she said. We recently debated the merits of Sneaker Night versus he said, she said on this very podcast. So (laughs) Sneaker Night remains, like, Something that should never have happened, no. but because it's like Frankenstein. <laughs> but I'm grateful it did. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a work of art that is 
barbaric and disgusting, but so <laughs> <Barbaric>. good. <laughs> when she Agreed. says, "Are you ready? Did you eat? Did you have? Do you have the energy?" <laughs> What are we preparing baby. for? Like, what is what is sneaker <laughs> night? You, eat. Like, you have to have a full stomach for sneaker night. Yeah, I'm, I'm really like, worried. I don't know if I got enough energy, but bring it to me, Vanessa. That's so good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Basically, what we're going to do is dance. dance. <laughs> it's so good. It I like want that eight, at the clubs, like there's now. There's so to many day. moments of that song where the song just changes to a new song. Yeah. And, like, it is incredible. Mm. But he said, she said, I will say to pivot, but bring it back in a way. Did anyone go to the High School Musical tour? Featuring Drew Seeley. I no. Did. But I, I was did. very aware of the Drew Seeley feature, and he was yeah. on it before it was, like, common knowledge yes. he was, that I it was remember him. At, in the crowd, I said, who the hell is this man? Where the <laughs> hell is Zac Efron? Like, I was there for <laughs> Zac Efron, and then Drew Seeley walked out. But... That's where Ashley performed He Said, She Said, and that is another moment where I was like, I am so gay. I went home and made a music video, too, with my littlest pet shops. And oh, that, yes. was, that explains everything else. Yeah. Wait, so you were a Webkins girl and a Littlest Pet Shop girl? Yeah, Joe was an everything girl. If the, there was something, <laughs> I had it. Like, <laughs> yeah, any figurine, any stuffed animal. Yeah. Joe had a hundred and how many? 118 Webkins, but it's debatable. It might be 181. We haven't done the their back end research, but it, it's one oh of those two God. numbers. I hope it's 118. Did you have like an aunt or like a mother who was like by because our cousins were in the same situation where their grandma would basically bring them a new Webkins every time she saw them, and I was so jealous. It like, is who like was enabling. In retrospect, like it was my parents, and I really look back on it, and I'm like, you guys like. You, that was the worst thing you could have done as parents was like <laughs> buy me webkins incessantly and like it got to a point I would, I would like legitimately like religiously go to a mall and like buy a webkins the and they weren't store. cheap they were not cheap Joe they were coming in at like fourteen ninety nine, no. and there would be like a new webkin that would drop and Joe was like I, I need, need this webkin it'd make me sick <laughs> until I had it and I'm like okay like I'll come with you to the store like that I felt pressure. I had also, 10 and I was like. The problem with being gay and liking <laughs> Webkins was that, like, we would, like, look at them, but I yeah. would be too ashamed to, like, buy it. Because they also locked them up, like, cigarettes behind the counter. So oh, I would be oh, like. Yeah. I would just glance at like, them. Like, I, I think my cousin Alyssa would love I would this always, Webkins. I would always go for my cousin Alyssa wants this instead of me. And then I would, like, need oh someone. I'd be like, hmm, I guess that one. I guess the hippo. <laughs> and then, like. <laughs> As like, if I'm you weren't cry. like curated. It's so it. sad. Oh it's actually God. sad. Yeah. That is yeah. really sad. Anyways, that's me. <laughs> um, wait. That leads me to a side question that I'm just curious about. Are you guys only children? No. no. Okay. What's the sibling situation? Because I have been. I can't tell. I have an older sister who's five years older than me, which is why most that's most of my personality comes from that. For sure. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I have a sister that's ten years older than me and then a brother who's seven years older. So yeah, I was like oh. very much the I was basically an only child because by the time mm-hmm. they were in college, I was still like in my formative years. But right. I, I would also say like I truly was like Joe's brother yeah. because I was over yeah. Every single day, eating dinner at his day- table. Ooh, every single day. So yeah. you, yeah, you had that experience. Like you have older siblings, but also each other. Yes. And yeah, that, yeah, that, like, yeah. That yeah. makes sense. At the very end, uh, for some reason, I never really realized or recognized the fact that Sharpay backs down so fast, and it's just mm-hmm. not realistic. Mm. Like. She should not. I know they want to show that she's like a good sport or whatever, but she's not a good sport. Right. No. So why would she be going up to Gabriella like, <laughs> um, <laughs> I guess I'll do the show if you can't do one. <laughs> and then she's like, it means good luck or whatever. I just, yeah. I don't buy it. First of all, once again, the way that you guys can mimic these characters is crazy. <laughs> That's actually his <laughs> Yes. It is. Yeah lazy screenwriting and i'm really sorry yeah. to, to patrick <laughs> to yeah peter? Peter? peter 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 same peter. thing patrick yeah. peter 
I'm sorry Close to him, enough. but I almost think I can imagine that the original book for High School Musical was like three and a half hours long, and yeah. Disney was like, "We have we have to cut it down," mm. because yeah, there is like weird there are like there are like weird moments like there's just like choppiness to a lot of it. I remember mm-hmm. being almost mad that Sharpay was like, "This is fine." Mm-hmm. There should yeah, have been yeah. like another like or the the end credit scene with the oh, cookies. with the cookies. She got so sweet. Yeah. yeah like that should have been actually like Sharpay like planning her revenge. Mm-hmm. That would be yeah. a better yes. ending to the movie. It's like yeah. they're all Kill Gabriella Montez. They're holding up the signs like I love drama, right? Oh, that's sweet. And, like, <laughs> yeah. and I'm like her up there. I'd be like, what the what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Since when? I feel like her, uh, her like, half-baked redemption at the end feels to me very, like, we need to be able to sell t-shirts with her on it after mm-hmm. this. Oh, my God. So she couldn't she be too redeemed. hateable. Yeah. Because she can't even have her country club in peace. <laughs> Everyone has to come along and fuck up yeah. everything she has. <laughs> yeah. At that beautiful pool. She just wants fabulous, yeah. and everyone just happens to be around her. She's I'd be like, so pissed. <laughs> yeah. If I was Sharpay, and does her dad, like, own that country club? Mm-hmm. I, the wealth in uh, that movie is worth discussing. I mean, yes. the homes that they were staying What's in? going on? Troy's home was a, it was a nunnery? Yeah, it, it looked like a like, nunnery. It, looks like, it really looks like a church. Like, it was a monastery. I the same thing. Yeah, when, when uh, in, in the first movie, like, obviously, as we're discussing, when he's like, you know how much a basketball scholarship is worth? I'm like, look at your you house. Yeah. Yeah. You, you got it, sir. You built a full basketball court in the backyard. Like, just, you don't need the scholarship. And... There's, like, another shot of it later where there's, like, this really intense, like, like grill pizza oven thing, like, <laughs> built into this, like, stone bullshit. I'm like, what do you mean? <laughs> you can pay. <laughs> pay up. Yeah. Oh. I just have to say that overall, I find this movie really embarrassing to watch. <laughs> you feel that way? <laughs> Rewatching it, like, I will say, I was like, this is the, I mean, I'm so hyperbolic. I will say anything is the best thing I've ever seen in my entire life. But I was like, this time, I was like, this was the best time I've ever watched this movie. Um, so I don't know if I necessarily felt embarrassed, but now looking back on it, like, maybe I'm a little bit embarrassed that I thought it was that good. <laughs> but yeah, I can see. No, I'm going to stand by it. Even when I first saw it, I was like, this movie's objectively good. Like, I think, mm-hmm. again, like, for a DCOM especially, it, like, Put Disney Channel movies on the map. Oh, yeah. Like mm-hmm. yes. nothing would have. It happened. changed the game. It changed the entire trajectory of the channel yes. forever. Yeah. It changed the like, whole industry. Like they were like get started yeah. on movie musicals immediately. The Descendants yeah. happened as a result. Teen it's Beach Cameron. Teen Beach. I've never seen that in my entire life, and I don't want to find out what it's about. Oh my is it god. Good? Mm-hmm. I only watched it because of Hannah's babysitting job, and mm-hmm. it. <laughs> It's just, I. what's hard with the DCOM musical thing is that you know that whoever is the right age for it when they see it the first time will think it is the best yeah. thing that has ever been produced. Mm-hmm. It almost is um, sad. Mouth. It's sad. Lemonade mouth. Lemonade mouth. I mean, yeah. I thought that was the best thing that was ever produced. Yeah, we were not the right age for it. <laughs> no, we were like a little bit old. And I was, I was just I was about like, to I, say. <laughs> no, we were, <laughs> like, we were I, way too old for Lemonade Mouth, and I was like hoping they would go on tour. Yeah. Like, we like, I was oh like, God. this is my favorite oh my band. <laughs> I, didn't, I, I didn't watch that one. Yeah, no, it probably I, missed I everyone's time. It missed, no one watched it. But, <laughs> but it, us. it really it hit me in a crazy <laughs> way. I would watch. I, I mean, Bridget... I could talk for hours about Bridget Mendler, but the thing is, you <laughs> both need to watch Lemonade Mouth. I, I, would, I think that it might hold homework. up. If and when we do Lemonade Mouth, will you come back on? For the yes. <laughs> in, a, in a heartbeat. Yes. If you'll have okay. us. We need, like, experts, and that's kind we of... We come on and we were like, Lemonade Mouth is just queer-coded. <laughs> we <We're laughs> everything. Like, it's queer-coded. <laughs> no, I will say that Lemonade Mouth is about, like... Like having a dad in prison and like having a grandma who's dying. Like that movie's, cr- they go dark with the themes. Mm-hmm. It is what? also queer coded. Yes. Because Haley Kyoko's in it, and that's enough to say this right. might be a little bit LGBT. That's right. not even coded. That's no. not just queer. It's, just a fact. it's objectively queer. 
<laughs> yeah. I will say we do a lot of that on our show, too. Not as much as we used to. We've actually been kind of on one lately of, like, <laughs> every movie we watch, like, like we look up the letterbox reviews, and people are like, they're lesbians. And I'm like, it's like, no, no they're, they're not. not. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's just, no, they're not. It's just not there, but everyone wants it to be there, and, like, obviously so do we, but, like, you're going to watch princess protection program and tell me that's gay <laughs> <laughs> like like no i'm just not buying no. it like, it's joe no. that's commenting it it's actually me i'm writing the reviews <laughs> he is <laughs> well it's like it is fun especially on letterbox to like make joke like joke reviews i do it all the time but mm. it gets to a point where you can tell that some people are really serious and you're like it's oh i'm not joking not there. no <laughs> This no. is stone cold. I would fully. I guarantee you, if I watch Princess Protection Program, I would be like, "You this find is a way." Beautiful queer love story. <laughs> yep. <laughs> he always Wait, finds okay. a way. A queer coded other thing. Okay, one of you posted an Aquamarine. I knew something. you were oh. going to bring up Aquamarine in this moment. I okay, was going to try to beat all, you to it. I have an Aquamarine poster like in my line of sight right now, like. <laughs> Is that not the gayest, though? I was going to ask you, because I'm honestly, like, I haven't watched it with that lens. I will say as a complete pivot, the mm-hmm. merch you guys have with the, the starfish earrings. I want them. That is, like, <laughs> I was like, oh, my God. Like, that is so perfect. So perfect. Oh, my God. Is the film Thanks. queer? You tell me. Yes. Great. Yes. Yeah. Immediately, because it's, that's all I need. Accepted. Yeah. The, the short version is that it's, like, between the two girls it's like queer codependent one of them has to move and neither of them are like ready to reckon with like moving away from each other and like what that means for them personally it's just gay like if you watch it you'll just you'll just see and but and there's a mermaid is like is aquamarine like a a symbol for them like i feel like she's very symbolic storytelling mm-hmm. wise I feel like, yeah, like <laughs> to me, the most um, pr- perhaps projection I've done is on uh, the teens. But, you know, right. we can we can go yeah. deep on that one. To me, like, like, they, like, <laughs> to me they were too young. They're too young. Like, I like I Emma's think, like not. She looks like nine. She is years not old. nine. Yeah. She is not nine. She's like 14. Really you can have a crush when you're 14. <laughs> I just don't see it for Aquamarine. I don't. I know you do, but I how just don't. Are you, how have you waited this long to tell me that you don't see it? Because I oh didn't know that that was important to you. <laughs> no, 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 no. I thought you took the blueprint of Aquamarine. Because the whole thing, also, Hannah wrote a play that kind of uses the the blueprint of Aquamarine. Like, a story little beats. Bit. A little bit. Anyway, mm-hmm. the girls in that, one of them, I guess... Or maybe both. I don't know. Are queer and um, oh right, right. And um, I thought you kind of took that idea of the codependency of the friendship in Aquamarine and then made it queer in your play. I didn't know you thought you're it like, actually. You're was. like airing me out right now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you're not Sorry. wrong, but really, okay. It's like that, but it's also. Um, I can't believe that I'm saying this, but I, people that listen to the show hear me say this all the time. But it's also Confessions of a Teenage Drama Queen. Oh my that god! Movie. Yeah, Allison Pill has yeah. never not yes. played a lesbian, mm. even and when she's not truth. trying to. Yes. One hundred percent. When she's like, you showed me that it's okay to be different. And she's like crying. <laughs> and you're like, I'm being taken somewhere I was not. Si- and she's like, I did like not sign mad. up. What did she say? You're a coward? What, she yes. Just, yeah. Yeah. She's That's queer oh. love. That is queer yeah. heartbreak. Yes. And yes. it's Alison oh Pill. God. Like, I am so sorry. If you're going to cast Alison Pill in something, she has to be playing gay. Mm. She cannot. It's, like, a character, it's a character choice. Yes. You just sealed it's like a, her it's face. It's just in her essence. It's just yeah. always going to be there. Oh but that's that yeah. movie especially. Carla, not Carla. What is, what is? Carla Santini. Is that that movie? That's Megan Fox. That's in Megan that Fox. I thought it was. I I knew it was Megan Fox, but I thought it was from Holiday in the Sun. That's Brianna Wallace. I'm Brianna so sorry. Wallace. Wow. Of the Wallace Love Department that. store Wallaces. <laughs> I also want to ask if there's a favorite song. Like, what's your? Oh group? yeah, what's yeah, your yeah. Song? Oh my god. Yeah. I on. I do think for me it's Bop to the Top. 
I mean, like, I listen to that song, like, almost religiously, not because it's good, like, not because they sound good, because of the lyrics, um, and I just want to move this, bo- I want to shimmy, shimmy, mm-hmm. shimmy, yeah, it's, me, a fun one. it's a fun one, and again, like, yeah, yeah it's bilingual, it is, <laughs> for sure, in a way, <laughs> in a way, <laughs> um, whether it should be or not, yeah, it, is. it shouldn't, be, I, <laughs> right. listen, what about you? I think for me, it was and always will be start of something new. Mm. Like that song mm-hmm. to me, like that it's just such a good opener. It's kind of like yeah. mind blowing to me. The first four minutes, yeah. it starts with that. Like, how can you go down from? And that? I think it's like I, yeah. my child brain was tricked because it mm-hmm. was like the way that the crowd engages with their karaoke performance is insane. <laughs> mm-hmm. But I was like, yeah. this is it. Like, this is the best song I've ever heard. And, like, I do, yeah. it just is nostalgic to me yeah. in a way that it's just so good. When I was the age, like, approximately when it came out, I really hate to say this, but it shouldn't be surprising. Um, I was a When There Was Me and You girl. 100%. Yeah. That's what I was going to oh say. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Wait, a powerhouse ballad. I love it. <laughs> yeah, like. No, specifically when she is walking down the stairs and goes, and wishes on <laughs> Chills, you guys. We have the same We're brains. so extremely aligned. It's great. <laughs> if we watched this movie together, we would have been flagging the same exact part. If we, we wouldn't be paying attention if we were watching the movie together because we'd be screaming the entire time. That's crazy. When she walks around and comes down those stairs, I I uh-huh. had full body chills. I was sick. Yeah. <laughs> spoke to the soul she yeah. did yeah With the body of the soul yeah runner up is um wow cat everywhere yeah. raise your hands up in <laughs> should we dance air. should we do the dance yeah that, Wait, that was a moment in time like everybody i feel like everyone knew the dance you yeah. would pull that out of it was nowhere. like a tiktok dance it was like say so yeah like, you'd be like oh there's like, awkward silence we're all in this <laughs> actually <laughs> oh. yeah so my dream for this movie as we continue on in time is that it will eventually turn into its own Rocky horror where Mm. there are monthly screenings and teenagers like 20 years from now are doing like call, like call and response. There are reenactors. That's what I want. And I also want there to be an all drag um, yes. Casting and performance. Of no. Yes, <laughs> I'm gonna lose my mind. Like this is like, like can't you I'm, see it? it's like we're sitting with Walt Disney. Like <laughs> this is it for me. Yep. I think the Rocky Horror thing could start today. Mm-hmm. Like I think we yeah. should get yes. on that. Yeah. And, like you should yes. just like. I think we should. Why not? I th- and I also yeah. think we should craft Twinkle Town the musical. I think it should yeah. be on Broadway. I mean, like, That's people will be like, point. what's Twinkle Town the musical? And then all of a sudden, there's Breaking Free. <laughs> <in it. laughs> They're like, what Wait, the that's fuck? like, that's like a great idea. That's what I'm saying. It is. I think we all should yeah. write it. The last I mean, musical. I have, I have a playwriting degree. Like, <gasps> don't get me started. <laughs> oh, no, let's get her started. <laughs> I was, yeah. I was about to say something just occurred to me too. What if we had like a like a podcast collab event where we did a screening of like one of these movies yes. or or, uh, or like did percent, something? Yes. I would love that. Yes. Would be so fun when we're all and yelling like the, back. My nail beds are history. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. With like a V on our face. Yeah. <laughs> like, yes. Just Rocky Horror. It. Oh. Oh my god. I think Absolutely. When, literally, why not? I think the amount of people who would come to that just to see high school musical on the big screen. <laughs> yeah. Like they've never seen yeah. it before. Mm-mm. It's time. Yeah. It's also I'm sorry, it's themed. We're coming in costume to it. Yeah, and- if you don't show up in costume, you're not <laughs> oh. coming in the door. No, there's come on. Yes. Yeah. Costumes required. I also was Absolutely. Troy Bolton in Disney World. You this looked is- exactly like him, Joe. Yeah. Not like no 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 no. <laughs> Don't get it twisted. I was not employed by Disney. I was not working. I was. Yeah, I knew that's what you were thinking. No, no, no. I was not friends with Troy. This was. I voluntarily (laughs) (laughs) went to the park on Halloween at for Mickey's not so scary Halloween party. Uh We went as the Sanderson Uh sisters one year. Mm -hmm. One. This is. It's the mental illness is so deep. It's so crazy. (laughs) But the most casual year for me was Troy Bolton. I 
wore the full outfit and straightened my hair for it. And it permanently, I think that permanently damaged my hair. Mm. That's when it started oh falling out God. was that day. But I really it was worth just it. like him. It was good. You looked so good. The humiliation was worth it. <laughs> <laughs> it, I, I mean, I could only assume there's photographic evidence. There's a lot. Can there's a lot of it. <laughs> it was, I was like really face tuning myself, so it is uncanny to look at, but it is me. Uh-huh. I, I think like, the essence of Joe it is this me. big. Yeah, it's a little, it's a little bit. Nuts. You're like, wait, your waist? Where's your waist? <laughs> My arms are also especially big. Yeah. <laughs> I can't. One thing we have in common, Joe, we do keep a receipt. Both of us keep a receipt for <laughs> yeah. for decades. But we really. Yeah. What is your wait? What are both of your signs? Uh, I'm a Cancer. Okay. Oh my god. Wait. When was your birthday? Did it happen? Yeah, June twenty sixth. Oh okay, god, happy, happy belated. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> uh, I'm a Leo, and my birthday is July twenty sixth. So our birthdays are a month. Oh my, oh my god. Gosh. Happy almost yeah. birthday. Yeah. It's coming Thank up. you. I'm also a Thank Leo you. August 2nd. Nice. Look at that. Oh my You're god. You're really far away from all of us. I know. I'm a Taurus. Eek. Eek. Yeah, April. April 30th. April 30th. Taurus is a is a good sign. Yeah. It's good, yeah. yeah. All, all, our two cousins who are extremely close to are both Tauruses and like there's okay. a lot of like Taurus. We have Thank good you Taurus for the affirmation presence. of my sign. Like I actually needed it in that moment. <laughs> And now yeah. we have another delightful Taurus to add to our list of delightful Tauruses in our lives. Oh so, God. Yeah, yeah, fuck you, Joe. A Leo cancer combo, <laughs> though. Like, I hate to make it about us again. No, but make it about you. That is my favorite combination. No, no, like, I mean, this works. I <laughs> this guess. dynamic works. Yes. But my, my, one of my other really close friends is a cancer, and I think that there's no other combination like that. Mm-hmm. Like, this makes total sense to me. I'm pointing to both my laptop <laughs> screen and our TV. Yeah. <laughs> Also, yeah, the sibling part helps, but yeah, right. That's right. another part. I of think it. it's a good combo too. Joe and Andrew, I don't even know where to begin. This was a dream come true. <laughs> um, we love your show so much, and you know, as you said, it's like um, people feel like they really know you after they listen to your show, and I feel like we felt that way. But now we finally got to become friends too, and now we really know. Yeah. Um, too much. So. Yes, <laughs> I was like matching your level of vulnerability with the VMK sex day, but, you know, It's okay. <laughs> it's so good. It's freeing. Where can our listeners find you? Find your podcast, your personal accounts, etc. You can find us on Instagram at Good Children Pod. Also on TikTok at Good Children Pod. Um, you can find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and definitely watch on YouTube. Personally, you can find me on um, TikTok at Andrew underscore Musky and on Instagram <laughs> at Andrew M U S T A R E L L A. We have so we just give, we're going to give you a bibliography. Um, I'm on TikTok <laughs> at Be Quiet Joe and on Instagram at J O E H E G Y E S. You're both the best. Thank you for oh, having joined you. us. Thank you so much for We've having us. We've had so us. much fun. Yeah, no, this was therapeutic. Yeah. It's refreshing not to just... <laughs> I mean, like, I love talking to you, Joe. Don't get me wrong. But it's refreshing to bring <laughs> some other faces into the mix. This was amazing. It's nice because I'm, like, only half as drained. I, we usually end these and mm-hmm. genuinely are, like, pulling ourselves up from the couch. We're like, yeah. how? Like, <laughs> yeah. We're like, what are we going to eat? Like, how do we do this? Like, it's nice. <laughs> how do we go on? Yeah. It's nice to feel refreshed. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I do feel like we're sharing one, we share like one brain cell in this situation, which is makes it even better. Like, I can't believe how much we mutually resonated with in this film. Um, yes. I can't wait until we do Lemonade Mouth. Get on it. <laughs> yes. really yeah. Same. Come back to it. <laughs> I have I have a final note. I have a final note we can go out on. We are Panera girls. We are oh, the yeah. Panera girls uh, that yes. you speak of. Thank yes. you for that's your why, service. Yeah, and that's why we felt safe. <laughs> yeah, we felt really yes. comfortable. Immediately, we were like, yeah, they love bread. <laughs> uh-huh. And I was a Hot Topic girl. Have to add that, too. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It is, like, yeah. you're layered. I mean, you said you yes. listened to Avril in fifth grade. You didn't even have mm-hmm. to say it. You mm-hmm. really, like, it <laughs> really true. is. It's like, like Alice and Pill's queer codedness. It's of the <laughs> essence. Is I'm hot topic coded. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
thank you both so much again and everyone listening at home um you are now legally obligated to listen to good children every single episode that exists um you will love every moment just like we have oh my god thank you guys again thank you you can find more from us at evergreenpodcast.com slash sleepover dash cinema and keep up with our latest creative projects at two pink pictures.com we're on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and YouTube at Sleepover Cinema and post a full video version of each episode on YouTube and Facebook every Thursday. And if you like the show, if it brings back evocative memories of childhood or tweendom or babysitting, share an episode or two with a few friends. Sleepover Cinema is a production of Evergreen Podcasts, produced, edited, and engineered by us, Hannah and Audrey Leach. Sleepover Cinema is mixed by Sean Rule Hoffman and has theme music by Josh Perlman Hall. Our executive producer is Michael D'Aloya. Leave us an iTunes review telling us what movie you'd like to see us cover next or leave us one because you like us and it's good for the algorithm and we need it. We'll chat again soon. Bye.